Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to code the algorithms we've seen for minimum spanning trees. So we're going to code Prim, Kruskal, and Borovka's algorithms. So let me share my screen and start. By the way, I don't know what's wrong with the quality of my video. Sorry about that. Okay. So remember from the previous lectures that uh, in the MST problem, we're given a graph, and this is a weighted graph, and our job is to find a spanning tree, a tree that touches every vertex, such that the total weight of this tree is as small as possible. And we saw three different algorithms. I'm going to start with Prim. So Prim's algorithm was pretty easy. It was that I start from some particular place, and every time I keep adding the cheapest edge that I can add while keeping my tree connected. So for example, here, uh, let me erase this. If I start from H, the question is what is the cheapest edge I can add? And well, the cheapest edge is this one, so I'll add it. Now I have two, six, seven, 11, and eight. What is the cheapest among them? It's two, so I'll just add two. Now I have 10, 14, four, six, uh, seven, and eight. The cheapest is four, so I'll add this edge with weight four. Now, next time the cheapest edge is this two, I'll add it. Now, what do I have? I have eight, I have seven here, so this seven is cheaper, I will add the seven. Now I have eight here and here, I have nine here. So let's say I'll add this eight. Now I have four here, which is the cheapest, I'll add it. And finally here I have the nine, which is the cheapest. And of course, sometimes there is a tie. For example, when I was choosing the eight, I could have cho chosen the other eight. It's fine, when there is a tie, you can pick whichever you want. So we want to implement this algorithm now. Let's call it prim.cpp. And well, I'm going to start by just reading the inputs. So let's say that I have some maximum n, something like this, or maybe 10 to the power of 4 is enough. I'm going to read the number of vertices and the number of edges. And then for every edge, I'm going to read its two endpoints, so U and V, and I'm also going to read its weight or cost, which is W. So I read U, V, and W. And I'm going to save uh, my graph basically as an adjacency list. So I'm going to have a list of neighbors, I'm calling it nay, for each one of my vertices. And I'm also going to keep the weights. Uh, so the idea is that these are the weights that correspond to the same edges in this neighbors. So when I have an edge from U to V with weight W, I say in the neighbors of U, push back V, but also remember that the weight of this edge was W. Similarly, in the neighbors of V, I push back U, and I remember that the weight was W. Okay. So in the neighbors of U, I added V, and this is just saying what is the weight of the corresponding edge. So if I change the n to a w, that gives me the weight of the edge. And in the neighbors of v, I'm pushing back u. And again, same thing. OK. Now that I have all of these things, I'm going to have a starting vertex. And you can start from whichever vertex you want. I'm just going to start from vertex 1. And basically, the way we're going to code this is very similar to Dijkstra. So every time I'm looking at all the edges that are going out from the vertices that I have covered so far. So if I've already covered this vertex, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I'm just looking at all of the edges that are going from one of these vertices to one of the vertices outside. 
right? And I always want to find the one with the minimum weight. So this is very similar to Dijkstra instead, um, except that in Dijkstra, I used to try to find the vertex with the smallest distance. Here, I'm just finding the vertex that has the shortest edge. Okay. So I'm going to have a Boolean, let's say, for every vertex uh, called covered. So this just says whether I have covered the particular vertex or not. And yeah, so let me also include sets. So I'm going to have uh, a set of edges that I want to uh, take. So, but the way I'm saving these edges is going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to save the weight and then I'm also going to save the endpoint that is not yet covered. Okay, so I'm just going to put it like this. I call this prim. So the idea is that this first integer is the weight of the edge, and this second integer is the endpoint. And of course, I'm putting the weight first because I want them to be sorted by weight uh, and I want the smallest weight to come first. Now I'm writing this with a set, but this is exactly like the case of Dijkstra. So you could implement this also with a priority queue. It would probably be a little bit faster with a priority queue, but anyway, all the operations are taking logarithmic time in set as well, because a set is basically a balanced binary search tree. It's actually a red black tree. It's not an AVL tree, but it's just a different type of balanced binary search tree than the ones that we've seen. Okay, let's not go on too much of a tangent. Let's get back to coding this. So I want to start from vertex one. And the way I do this is by simply saying that imagine I have an edge of weight zero to vertex one. So I add that to my prim set. And then I say while, let's say my frame set is not empty, or I could check its size, or I could just say while it's not empty. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out the edge that has the smallest weight. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to say this edge, I could have defined edge as a pair of integers. I don't really care. So let's say this edge is my first L. So begin, and I have to also do so. Okay. Now, first, of course, I remove this edge from my set. So is E. And then I'm going to say, I want to add this edge, but I want to add this edge only if it's going to cover a new vertex. So if the second part of this edge, the end vertex is not covered, I want to not cover it. So if it's already covered, if e that second is covered, I just continue, pick out another edge. Otherwise, I say I'm covering it. Okay. Now let's say I have a total cost, which is zero, and my total cost increases by the weight of this edge. Actually, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say weight is e dot first, and the vertex v is e dot second. So covered v is true, and total cost increases by that. Right. Okay. Now, now that I've added this vertex v. So let's say, for example, I was adding this edge and this vertex D was the vertex that is now covered. Now that this is covered, I have to look at all the edges that go out of it. And I have to add all of those to my set of edges. So I just say for, uh, oh, sorry. So I want to go over the neighbors of the vertex V, okay? So i goes to navy dot size plus plus i. So the vertex u that I'm going to is actually navy i. 
and the weight of the edge that I'm taking, I realize that I'm using W again, but whatever is this weight. Now I want to add this to my set prim. So I want to say prim that insert, I first put the weight and then put the endpoint. But of course, I would do this only if I have not covered you already, because if I have already covered you, this doesn't make any sense. For example, if I've already covered this vertex and this vertex, I don't want to add this edge because that would just uh, not even uh, make sense. It will create a cycle. It's no longer a tree. So I just say, if not covered, you do this. OK. And finally, I'm just going to say, write the total costs. Okay. Now, when I was doing these things, I could also uh, keep track of other things if I wanted to, for example, which edges I'm exactly adding, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm just saying adding an edge with weight W to vertex V. Let's say I have this. So let me actually use the same figure from CLRS as my example. And that's CPP, line 38. Ah. Yeah, actually, I can just put this here and I can say W is E dot first, V is E dot second. Okay. Oh, the vertices are not numbered here. Let me number them. So let's say this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six. I actually have a pen. I don't know why I'm doing this with the mouse. Seven, eight, and nine. Okay, how many vertices? Nine, how many edges? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, what are my edges? I have one to two with weight one. I have one to seven with weight seven. I have one to eight with weight 11. I have one to nine with weight eight. So those were all the edges out of vertex one. Now I have uh, two to three with weight two, two to seven with weight six. 3 to 4 with weight 10, 3 to 5 with weight 14, 3 to 6 with weight 4, 4 to 5 with weight 9, 5 to 6 with weight 7, 6 to 7 with weight 2, 6 to 8 with weight 8, 7 doesn't have any new edges, okay, 8 to 9 with weight 4. Okay. And let's just see what it did. So uh, first it says adding an edge with weight zero to vertex one. That just means that I'm starting from vertex one. So I'm starting here. And then uh, from the vertices that I have already seen, which is I have already covered, which is just vertex one, it says uh, we add an edge with weight one to vertex two. So we're adding this one. Then we're adding an edge with weight two to vertex three. So this one, we are adding an edge with weight four to vertex six. Uh, so this one, we are adding an edge with weight two to vertex seven. Nice. We are adding uh, an edge with weight eight to vertex eight. So it went for this one. It could also go for this one, but that's the ordering. Uh, so we're adding an edge with weight four to vertex nine, it's this one. And finally adding a, an edge with weight nine to vertex four. Uh, oh, I forgot this one, yeah. We had already added this one as well, sorry. And then this one, okay. Yeah, and this is a minimum spanning tree and our minimum spanning tree's weight is 37. Okay, so this was prim. 
And this is the variant of prim that takes m log n time. Now, why is that? Basically, I have this set. And again, as I said before, instead of a set, you could also have um, a priority queue, basically a heap. And I'm inserting every edge once, and I'm taking it out once. So I'm doing OM operations here, OM insertions and deletions. And of course, every insertion and deletion takes log n time. So overall, it's OM log n. Great. So this was the implementation of prim that uses a set. Again, you could also use a heap. But just like the case of Dijkstra, I can also have an implementation of prim that uh, doesn't use a set and give me gives me an on squared runtime. So let me do this. Uh, let me copy my prim and let's call this prim variants.cpp. And let me open this variant. So let's say that I don't want to use the set. So I'm going to remove the set from here. I'm also going to remove this set from here. Instead, I'm just going to say for every vertex, what is the weight of the smallest edge that is uh, connecting a covered vertex to this vertex. Okay, so uh, I don't know what to call this. I'll just call it WW, bad naming, but whatever, WW of I is the weight of the lightest edge that, uh, that connects a covered vertex to vertex I. This is what I want to do. And Again, initially, instead of saying that I have the edge with weight zero to vertex one, I just say WW of one is zero. But I have to also make sure that I'm uh, initializing these WWs correctly. So I say for every I from one to N, WW of I is some big number. Now, you can use whatever number you want, as long as it's bigger than any number that can possibly be uh, the weight of your uh, minimum spanning tree. So I'm just going to put something like this. Okay, now here, remember every time I was trying to find a weight and a new vertex but I was trying to find the edge that is going out from the covered vertices and has the smallest weight. Now, instead of doing it like this, I can just iterate over all of my vertices, right? So I'm going to have a V and a W. Let's say initially, I'd say that my V is minus one and my W is again, some big number. And uh, put the same number of zeros, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Maybe let me put one more here. And then I say, let's go over all of the vertices. And I want to see if I have to go to vertex I, if I want to extend my coverage to vertex I. And I say, well, first of all, I want vertex I to not be covered. And also I want WW of I to be less than this maximum weight that I have here. And if that's the case, V becomes I and W becomes WW of I. Okay, I continue this. By the way, I don't have this set prim anymore. So I say this file goes on forever. And here I say, if V is minus one, which means I didn't find any new vertex, I would just break. Otherwise I'm adding an edge with this particular weight to this vertex. So I say that V is now covered. My total cost increases by W. Now I go over all of the neighbors of V. And let's say I have a neighbor U with edge weight W instead, and U is not covered. Instead of adding it to this set, I just have to update WW of U, which becomes minimum of WW of U. And everything else is 
pretty much the same. Okay, let's see if this works. So invariant.cpp and I'm just going to copy the same input that I gave to my original print code. Okay, and as you see, this one also says 37. Okay, so this is how you code prim. And of course, this one has a runtime of O n squared because uh, this while loop every time finds a new vertex V to cover. So the while loop goes on for n iterations or n iterations. And also in every iteration, I'm just doing O n work, right? So here I'm going over n vertices and here I'm also going over at most n vertices and inside each of these four loops, I'm doing a constant amount of work. So it's just O n squared. Again, everything is very similar to Dijkstra. So if you haven't seen the lecture in which I quote Dijkstra, please watch that one as well. Okay, now let's move to our second algorithm, which is this one. This is Kruskal. And remember the idea in Kruskal was that instead of just keeping one set of covered uh, vertices, I'm just going to keep track of several different uh, connected components created by my edges. And every time I'm going to find an edge that has the smallest weight but connects two different connected components together. And whenever that happens, I just connect them. So for example, here I start with every vertex being its own connected component. I find that here's an edge of weight one. This is the minimum weight among all of my edges. And it's connecting two vertices in different connected components. So I add this. Generally, I started by sorting, let's say all of my edges by their weight. So I can just do this and then I find that there is like this edge with V2, I add that, there is this edge with V2, then uh, there is this edge with V4, this edge with V4. Uh, I have this edge with V7, but there the two endpoints are already in the same connected component, so I'm not going to connect those. I find, uh, and the same for this six. I find this seven, let's say I find this eight, and finally I find this nine, okay? So this is how I would find my strongly connected component in cruise call. Of course, I'm starting by sorting all of the edges by weight, and that's the part that's taking m log m. But again, log of m and log of n are pretty much the same thing because m is between n minus one and n squared. So the log is different by a constant factor, and I'm using the O notation here. And then for every edge in this sorted order, I'm basically just going to use my DSU and I'm going to ask, are the two endpoints uh, in the same connected component or in different connected components? And if they are in different connected components, I'm then going to merge them, okay? So let's code this. Let me call this Kruskal. Actually, let me just copy Prim and call it cruiscall.cpp. And let me open cruiscall. So now I'm going to change some things. First of all, I'm going to change how I'm saving my edges. So I'm removing this, and this was all Prim's algorithm, so I don't want that. So I'm just reading the input. Now I'm just going to save my edges. And now here's the thing. I'm going to say that an edge is basically just three integers. And I'm going to put the weight first. So I'm going to say it's a pair of an integer and a pair of two integers, okay? And so the idea is that uh, I put the weight first. So whenever I write W, I mean first. Then I put the first vertex. So this means second dot first. And then I put the third vertex, the second vertex, sorry, which means second to second, okay? Now, why am I putting the weight first? Again, I'm saying this is the weight because I wanna sort my edges by weight. And if I do this, I can just call sort and everything works out, okay? So algorithm, and here I'm just going to say, I have, let's say a vector of edges. Let's call it E, 
it's all of my edges. And every time I'm going to create an edge and then I'm going to read its two endpoints and its weights. And then I'm just going to put it into my vector of edges. And then I'm just going to sort everything. So sort e.begin, e.end. And of course, this is lexicographic comparison by default. So it just sorts it by weight. And that's the reason why I put the weight first. OK, now I have all of my edges in a weighted order. So I say for every edge E in E in this uh, order based on edges, if you queried and you realize that uh, the two endpoints are not in the same uh, set. So if query e dot u e dot v uh, is false, basically, they're not in the same set, then add this edge. So uh, my total cost, let's say I have a total cost, which was zero. My total cost increases by the weight of this edge. And then I have to merge the two endpoints, e dot u and e dot v, right? Because now I've added this edge and they're in the same strongly connected component. I can also say adding the edge and let's say uh, e dot u, e dot v, bit weight, e dot w. okay? I'm just writing this so that we can later on see what we're doing. And finally, I'm just going to say my total cost is this much. Okay, so this is all you need to do for cruise call. It's basically just going over the edges uh, in the order of weight. And every time that you see an edge that is connecting two different connected components, just add that edge to your uh, tree. And then, uh, of course, when you add it to your tree, the two connected components also get merged. Now, we have to implement a DSU, but we've seen how to implement a DSU before, right? Now, I'm going to be lazy, and I'm going to implement the DSU with representatives. Go back to the lecture on DSU. There we have seen how to implement DSU with trees and also path compression and so on. That's actually more optimal than this one. But to be honest, I don't care that much because I'm doing this sorting here and this sorting is already taking m log m time. It's actually taking theta m log m, not just O. So uh, it doesn't really matter that much to me to have the optimal DSU here, which gives me m log star n. I'm fine with just uh, spending m log n here as well. Okay, so I'm just going to say I have a, a representative array of size max n. Remember, rep i is the representative of the set containing i vertex i. And I'm going to also have this, the sets S, let's say, max N. And again, SI is the list of vertices that are represented by vertex I. And now, initially, I have to say everyone is their own representative. So I just initialize it here. I say for every I from 1 to N, the representative of vertex i is i itself, and si also includes i itself. OK, now I have to write two things. I have to write query and merge. Query tells me whether two uh, vertices are in the same set. So this is my query. Takes u and v. And all it does is check whether the representative of u is equal to the representative of v. And then we have merge. So merge u and v. Well, uh, this was pretty simple, right? So you say, first of all, we merge only representative. So u becomes representative of u. Instead of u, I want to look at its representative v, uh, the same thing. And then I say, if they're the same, just return, don't do anything. Otherwise, 
I want to merge the smaller one into the larger one. So let's say that I want u to be the smaller one. So I say if s of u dot size is bigger than s of v dot size, then uh, just swap u on v. So this ensures that u is the smaller one. Now that u is the smaller one, I know that I want to merge u into v. So what do I do? Very easy. I just say for every other vertex, let's say w, whose uh, representative was u, so anything that was in, sorry, s of u, I say rep of w is now v, and I also say that s of v dot pushback w. Now, at the end of it, I can say uh, remove s of u, but honestly, I don't care, it doesn't matter. I'm not really picky about uh, saving uh, any space here. Okay, so this is a very basic DSU. We've again seen how to do this before. So let's compile it now and let's see if it works. Let me keep it the exact same graph as before. And remember that Prim told us the answer is 37. And this one is also giving a total cost of 37. But if we go back and trace it, you will see that it's doing it, of course, in a different way. So let me go here. Actually, I wrote the numbers here. So I'm just going to do it on this one. Let me erase the edges. So this is what's happening. It first adds the edge one, two, which had made two. Then it's adding the edge two, three, uh, then six, seven. So six, seven, yeah, that one also has a weight of two. Three, six, which has a weight of four. Where is three, six? Okay, it's this one. Eight, nine, which has a weight of four as well. So now it's adding this one. As you see, this is very different from prim. Now I have two different connected components that have edges in them. And of course, this vertex is its own connected component. This vertex is its own connected component. Uh, so next I'm adding five, six, which has a weight of seven. Then I'm adding one, nine, which has a weight of eight. And finally, I'm adding four, five, which has a weight of nine. And the total cost is of course, 37. And uh, again, the minimum spanning tree is not necessarily unique. You might have many different minimum spanning trees, but of course the total cost of all of them uh, is going to be the same. Otherwise they're not minimum. Okay. So we also had one more algorithm and this one was Burufka's algorithm. I remember that this one was actually very similar to the previous one. It was very similar to Kruskal with the important difference that every time we just go over all of our connected components and we find the smallest edge that is going out of the current connected component. And then we add all of these edges at the same time, okay? So we can also implement this one. Honestly, I don't normally use it uh, for anything because it doesn't give you a better runtime uh, than cruise call. Uh, it's basically the exact same runtime. Uh, people in um, distributed algorithms actually like this because it has some uh, nice parallelization features. But for now, I'm just going to implement a very simple version of this. So let's say that I take the same thing. So actually, let me copy cruise call and let's call it Rufka. Hopefully I wrote that correctly. And the really important point in Borufka's algorithm, uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, is that you need to have a total order on your edges. So of course you have uh, the ordering of the edges based on their weights, but if you have several edges with the same weight, you need to also know which one comes first. Uh, and that's fine because I pretty much have it here anyway. So uh, 
if you look at the way that I'm defining my edges, so it's a lexicographic order, I can compare any two edges, right? So I first compare based on weight, but then if the weights are equal, then there is a well-defined order based on the next component and also the last component. So uh, in that sense, I'm fine. I don't need to change anything about the way that I'm uh, saving my edges. Uh, the difference is basically here. So you see what's, what's happening in this part uh, is that uh, we're doing cruise calls algorithm. So every time we're just finding uh, one edge and checking if the two endpoints are in the same uh, connected component. Borufka doesn't do this. Instead, Borufka says for each connected component, find the smallest edge that goes out. So I don't have this sort. I don't sort my edges first. And here, I don't have this one either. So I'm just going to say for every connected component. Now, how do I find my connected components? Well, my connected components are basically my sets SI. And actually here now it makes sense to say uh, that's uh, clear S U. So any SI that is non-empty would be one of my connected components, okay? So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say, go over all the connected components, which means for I from one to N, if SI is not empty, so if SI is not empty, go over all the vertices in SI and find the smallest edge that goes out of SI, okay? Now, how do I find the smallest edge that goes out of SI? Well, first of all, I say, let's look at the vertices in SI. So for every vertex V in SI, I say, let's look at the edges that go out of V, right? But I haven't really saved the edges like that. I have to uh, save the edges in a better way, right? So I'm just uh, saving the edges like this, U, V, W. But let's say for every uh, vertex, I also save the set of edges that are going out of it. So I do this, I say I have a vector of edge called outgoing and its length is max N, or actually let me just call it OG. And OG of I, is the set of all edges going out of I, okay? So uh, when I'm reading some edge E, I have to say OG of E dot U dot pushback E, and also OG of E dot V dot pushback. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Uh, at every iteration of Borufka, I'm basically going over all the vertices that are in the same connected component. And I'm asking what is the smallest edge that goes out, okay? So I'm going to call that smallest edge, again, SE for smallest edge. And I initialize this to something really big. So I don't know, something like this, okay? And uh, so one, two, three, four, five, I have this. Let's have to do this. Let's do, uh, oh, actually I can't do it like that. Let's do this. So I have my edge uh, and I'm looking at every vertex in the current connected component. And I'm asking what is the cheapest edge that goes from this vertex out? So for every E, that is uh, in the set of uh, basically OG of V. Well, I have to check, does this edge E go to a different component or not? Now, how do I check that? Well, I can just query the two endpoints or I can just check the representatives of the two endpoints. Basically, that's the same. So I say if, uh, but let me actually just use the representative. 
if the representative of e dot u is not the same as the representative of e dot v, then this edge is going somewhere out. So now I say, see if this edge has a smaller cost than se, or it comes, uh, if it has the same order, it comes before se. Sorry, if it has the same cost, it comes before se in my order. So se becomes the minimum of sen. That's it. So at the end of it here, se is the edge that has uh, and the smallest weight and it's going out of this set si. Okay. Now, of course, I have to keep track of all of these se's and I have to add all of them, right? So I can just say, uh, yeah, so what I, what can I do here? I have, let's say, a while loop here because this was just one iteration of Purufka. And inside it here, I'm doing this. And then I'm just going to add all of these edges together. Okay. So uh, let's say I have a vector called big SE, which contains all of these small SEs. So I say SE that push back small SE. And then I add all of the edges in this big SE at the end. So I say, uh, oh, and also I do this only if SE dot first is less than this number. Okay. So only if I found an edge, actually I do this. And now I just say for every edge E that is in this set, just do merge on the two end ones, e dot u and e dot v. Okay. Now, what is my total cost? I have to also check this. So my total cost increases by the weight of w. Uh, but again, the problem is that I might have added the same edge several times. So here I say if uh query e dot u e dot v is false edits so this will give me the total cost and actually every time that i'm doing a merge let's say i write merge and i write these two endpoints to see if this is working correctly Okay, again, let me just give it the same example that we've been using and let's see what we get. So I'm erasing all of these. Uh, what's happening? Oh, I cannot use U and V because I defined them like this here. Ah, okay. I'm going to just capitalize this. And now I have to fix a ton of things. Okay, line 74, 75, 76, 77. Okay. Thirty two, we have a problem. I choose this. So W is first, U is second at first, V is second at second. What's wrong with this? It's fine. Oh, 
This is painful. Nine sixty seven and seventy as well. Two B seven two. This one is fine. Still have it. This is an edge. Oh, I've written vector inside versus vector edge. Okay, it's finally compiled. Let's see what happens if we give it the exact same input. Um, what's happening? Oh, okay. So, uh, the problem is I had this while true here. I didn't have any conditions for ending it. And basically you have to end it when you don't have any new edges to add. So if SE is empty, I would just break it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This one also gave a total cost of 37. So it's correct. But of course, what's the point of using Borufka if you have to implement all the things that you needed for cruise call? So if you have to implement query and merge and all of those things, what's the benefit of Borufka in the first place? And of course, the answer is that the benefit is uh, you don't need to have those things. You can actually implement Borufka with a simple DFS. So I implemented this really painful version of Borufka, but let's now go and implement a better version, which doesn't use DSU and only uses DFS. So uh, let me do this. Let's call this one Borufka DFS.cpp. So I'm first going to read the input as usual. And zero. So I'm going to read N and M. And then I'm just going to say, read every one of the edges. Okay. So we'll read U, V, and W. So this means that I have an edge from vertex U to vertex V with weight W. Okay. Now, what am I going to do here? I'm basically going to save an adjacency list as before. So I'm going to have vector. I'm going to say uh, I have an adjacency list for every one of my vertices. And uh, OK, so neighbors. And I'm also going to save the bits just like before. Okay, and here I'm just going to say in the neighbors of U add V and in the weights of U add W, in the neighbors of V add U, in the weights of V add W. Okay, so this is just like before, but now the difference is that I want to find these edges uh, the cheapest edges that go out of each uh, connected component just by a DFS. Now, why can I do this? I can do this because if I do a DFS, it's actually quite easy to figure out uh, what one strongly connected, what one connected component is. So whenever I'm doing a DFS, I'm covering the entirety of a connected component. And it's also easy to keep track of the edges that are going out of this connected component, right? Now, why is that the case? 
Well, I can just keep track of my connected components. So let's say, uh, other than this, I will also have CC max N. And the idea here is that CC of I is the connected component of vertex I. Okay. Now, I'm also going to have the edges of my tree. So I'm going to have another vector here. Let's call it just T. And the idea here is that this is the adjacency list of my tree. And initially, my tree is empty. So here's what I'm going to do. This is my main while for Gurufka, and hopefully I will not forget to break it later on. And then all I do here is that say, I say every time for i from 1 to n, first, let's mark everything as not seen. So I'm going to have a Boolean called seen. And this is what I'm using in my DFS, of course. So I'm going to say seen i is false initially. And then I say for every i from 1 to n, just do a DFS from vertex i. If not seen i, do a DFS from vertex i. Now, of course, as we know, if I do a DFS from every vertex, I'm going to see all of my connected components. So when I do a DFS from vertex one, I see the connected component containing vertex one. Then next time I'm going to do my DFS from the first vertex that was not in the same connected component as vertex one and so on. Okay, so I'm going to see all of my connected components. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in my DFS here. So I'm going to have a DFS. It's going to start from a vertex U. And actually, I'm going to write it like this, II. So in my DFS, I want to know who the root of my DFS is. So I have U and R, but initially both of them are the same. And all I do here is that I say the connected component of U is R. I have seen U. And then for every edge that goes out of U in the tree, I'm going to go there. OK? Uh, actually, I don't really even need the scene because it's a tree, but doesn't really matter. So I say for every V that is connected to you in the tree, do the DFS from V and R. And of course, I do this only if not seen V. OK, so this is just my basic DFS. And at the end of this, I will have a different number for each connected component, right? Now, all I have to do is go over the connected components and find the smallest edge going out of each connected component, OK? Now, here's what I'm going to do. Again, let's say I have my edge, which is like this. I can call this an edge. Oh, I, I removed those, right? OK, I have to write it again. So let's say I define an edge to be a pair consisting of an integer and a pair of integers. And let's say I define u, uh, sorry, w to mean first. I define u to mean second but first. I define v to mean second but second. OK, so at this point, I know all of my connected components. So now I want to just go over every connected component and I want to see uh, what is uh, the cheapest edge that goes out of this connected component, OK? Now, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here. Or actually, no, let's not do that. Let's just do this. So I'm going to say I have a cheapest edge. And actually, let's call this CE. And the idea here is that CE of I is the cheapest edge going out of connected component I. OK. Now, again, here I say that 
all of my edges, C of I, I initialize it. I say it's like one, two, three, four, five, zero. So I just put some big edge as the smallest edge that goes out of here. Then I do my DFS. And after I do my DFS, I just want to go over all of my uh, connected components and find the cheapest edge that is going out of them. So actually, I go over every one of my vertices. And then I go over every edge that is going out of this vertex. So for every, actually, it's better if I use U. For every vertex U from 1 to N. And for every uh, neighbor of U. So let's say this neighbor is nay u i, and the corresponding weight of the edge is bay u i. So I know that I have an edge from u to v with weight w. Now, what am I going to do with this? I want to know, is this the cheapest edge that goes out of the uh, connected component of u or not? OK. So what is the connected component of U? I first find that. So that's the connected component of U. And then I say the cheapest edge of this connected component becomes the minimum of the cheapest edge of this connected component and the current edge. OK, now, very importantly, I have to have a unique representation of the current edge. Now, I know that I have to put W first. That's fine. But should I put U first in the uh, second part, or should I put V first? Well, because I want it to be unique, I say put the minimum one first, and then put the maximum one. OK? Now, I know this became overly complicated. I don't know why I do these kinds of things. OK. So this change the cheapest edge for this particular uh, connected component. Now, what am I going to do? Finally, I'm just going to go over all of my connected components, and I'm going to add these cheapest edges. OK? So I'm just going to say for every one of these uh, connected components, uh, so for i from 1 to n, I want to add the cheapest edge of connected component i. So e is the cheapest edge of connected component i. And I have to add an edge between e.u and e.v in my tree. So I say t e.u.pushback e.v and t e.v.pushback e.u. And of course, I want to do this only if this is uh, an edge that actually existed. So if e w is not this thing that I used as infinite, that's five zeros, right? So if it's less than one, two, three, four, five zeros, then put this, this one. So you see, I'm just doing it with a DFS. Honestly, it's not much simpler, but conceptually it is. Uh, now that I've done all of these, remember my while should continue for as long as I'm adding these things here. So I'm just going to have a flag, which is initially true, and I say while flag, and inside the while I set the flag to false. And when I add an edge, I set the flag to true again. Okay, and let's just say print the edges. So I have an edge, e.u, e.v. OK, this is how you would implement Borovka with DFS. Let me give it 
the same input as before. Go back to define my max n. Sixty-four. I have something missing there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I should say this here. If we got the use this time, yes, yes, and then. Okay, let's give it the same input. I hope I don't have to debug this. Okay, it keeps adding edges. So we do have a bug somewhere. Uh, this is the bug. So every time, I'm okay, so let me just do this iteration or something like this, new iteration. And let's say I read some number here so that it stops. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. Add this. Okay, this is a new iteration. It adds these edges. In the first iteration, it says add the edge from one to two. Okay, this edge. Now it's normal that it shows it twice because the edge is actually the cheapest edge out of this connected component, which was only vertex one, and also out of this connected component, which was only vertex two. So add two, three. This two, three. Okay. And it's also adding four, five. Where is vertex four? Okay, four, the closest one was five. It's adding five, six. Okay. It's adding six, seven. It's again adding six, seven. It's adding eight, nine. And again, eight, nine. Okay. The first iteration seems to have been done correctly because Every vertex was connected to its closest neighbor, basically. But now we have three connected components. So in the second iteration, it adds one, two, six, seven, and eight, nine. So why is it adding one, two again? What? One and two are already in the same uh, connected component. Am I calculating my connected components wrong? Okay. Let's go back here. Connected component of U is R, scene of U is true. Actually, let me do this. Connected component of U is R. Let's write this to see what's happening. giving it the same input. This is the first iteration. Everything is in its own connected component. And we add all these edges that we saw here. In the next iteration, one and two are in connected component one, and three is also in the connected component of one. Okay, four, five, and six are in the connected component of four. Four, five, six, and seven as well, yeah. And eight and nine are in there on connected components. So it seems the connected components are calculated correctly, but then it says add an edge from one to two, which is very weird. So I'm not checking something correctly here. So this part is working correctly. This DFS is working correctly. I'm saying for every vertex U and every neighbor V of U, uh, 
oh yeah yeah i have to check that cc of u and v is not the same so uh yeah, i have to say if cc of u is equal to cc of v basically if they're in the same uh, connected component then continue okay now this should work hopefully okay so these were the same things that we added before now it's adding in the second iteration three six and one nine so uh where is three three is here six is there okay three six and it's also adding one nine and now everything is connected and yeah that's the end okay so this gives us also the correct uh well, one of the correct minimum spanning trees. I'm removing that one. I will put the codes on Canvas for you to access, and I'll see you soon.